In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of using the Adobe Connect 9 Events module. As an event manager, you can use the Events module to easily set up your events, add registration pages, and even set up catalogs to help drive registration. You can add newly registered users to your Adobe Connect database, and the analytics tools help you track the effectiveness of your campaign's performance as well as check participant engagement. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create, edit, and promote events, and also set up user registration. The analytics portion we'll cover in a separate tutorial. Now events are typically live seminars, but you can use the events module for meetings, seminars, recordings, or anything else on the Adobe Connect server you might want to promote and track, even a PDF document or video. Note that the event we're going to create must point to content that already exists, a seminar room, a meeting, or another object on the Adobe Connect server. So make sure you have your content already in place before you begin to create your new event. So that being said, I'm logged into my Adobe Connect 9 account, and I'm at the main hub. So I can click on the Meetings button, and then click My Meetings, and show you the listing of meetings that I already have set up. So this is content that I can use to connect to my event as I create it. So I'm going to go up onto the Event Management tab, and I'm going to click New Event. In here, I can go in and decide all of the information that I want for the settings for my new event. Let's walk through it. So under Event Template, I can use one of the default ones, or I can use my own custom one that has my logo and my brand colors already in it. Here's where I name my event. I'm going to call this one November Shapes. And I'm going to give it a custom URL. I'm going to call it November underscore Shapes. Under Event Information and Detailed Information, this is where I can go in and put a short blurb that's going to appear in the event catalog and a more detailed one that's going to appear on the event site. So I have some information already set up in a text file. I'm just going to copy it over. There's the short one, and here's my more detailed one. I'm going to scroll down here, and you'll see that I have the option to have people require a password to register. Under Presentation, I can choose between different on-demand events or live events. I'm choosing an Adobe Connect meeting. Down here, I can require approval after they register. I'm not choosing that one for this particular event. Under Visibility, I definitely want it to show in the catalog, and I'll give you a demonstration of the catalog when we're done creating the event. Allow Direct Entry can be helpful if people sign up at the last minute and they don't have time to go and check their email and get the link before the event starts, I can actually just have them automatically get into the room. Under Start and End Time, I'm going to go in here and choose that information as well. Pick my time zone. If I want a limited number of registrants, I can indicate that here as well. And now I can start to brand it with some of my graphics. So you'll see that I have a place for my event logo. So I'm going to choose that one. Here's my small banner. And here's my large banner. i choose that one as well. Now I want to enter speaker information, and my speaker is Irene Adler, so I'm going to enter her name. And again, there are two separate spots where I can enter information about her, a shorter one and a more detailed one. So I'm going to go and choose my shorter one first, and copy and paste those in. Now my speaker image, I actually have a headshot of Irene I want to put in. There it is. Choose my language. Under Event User Policy, do I want my users to be guests or full Adobe Connect users? I can indicate that here as well. Under Available Tags, I'm choosing Featured Events and Webinar. This will be important when we get into the catalog. I'm going to click Next. Here's where I choose the content. So remember I said I had some meetings set up that I could choose one of them. I'm just going to use this one to attach to my new event and click Next. Now, under Create Registration, here's where I can enter information that I want my users to give me. So, for example, some of these are required. I also want their zip code. 
I want to leave Enable Campaign Tracking on because I want to use the analytics with this. I'm going to click Next. Here are the questions that are already in place, including the zip code. I'm going to add another one. I have a choice between multiple choice, short answer, yes or no, and some others. I'm going to choose new yes or no. And I'm going to ask them if they've ever attended a live webinar before. And down here I can require a response. A good example of when that might be helpful is if I'm using advanced content and I want them to have taken an introductory class before they take the advanced one, I can require that response here. I'm going to hit Save. There are all of my questions, and there's the new question I just added. I'm going to click Next. And here's where I can add my participants, so I can bring in a CSV file if I want, or enter them one at a time, whatever I prefer. I'm going to scroll down here and go to Next. Here's my email options page, and this is where I can actually go in and control everything to do with emailing my registrants. So for example, I can click Customize and see exactly what their invitation is going to look like. I can scroll down here and get a preview of it. There are the graphics that I added, very professional looking. I can also remind my participants as it gets closer to the event. I can go down here and send a test email if I like. I'm going to click Finish. Now, I've finished creating my event, but it's important to understand if you scroll down here, you'll see it has not been published yet. So I need to publish it, but I'm going to scroll up to the top just to show you. I can go to Edit Information if there's anything in here that I need to change. When I'm ready to publish, I click on Event Information, and then I can scroll down here and click the Publish button, and it gives me the option to publish my event. Now, to get an idea of what we've just created, let me show you what the previews look like. Because again, I'm under Event Information. Once I've published my event, I can go in here and see what all of the different components are going to look like. Here's my Login page. This is what the registrants will see when they go to log in after they've registered, when the meeting is ready to begin. Here's the Event Landing page. Very professional, and you can see that the graphics I uploaded are used on every one of these. Here's the registration page. There's the question that I added. And finally, the event speaker information page. So there is lovely Irene and all of the information about her. Now, down at the bottom, you'll see the associated tags. I chose webinar and featured events, so they're also included there as well. I'm going to scroll up to the top, and the next thing I want to do is go into my event catalog. This is going to show me all of my upcoming events. So at the top, you'll see that there is embed code for each one of my events. So before I show you that, let's scroll down. This is the carousel. I can use this button or I can use the buttons across the bottom to see all of my different events that I have scheduled. This is the one I just scheduled now, the November Shapes meeting. I'm going to scroll down. Here are my popular tags. So if I click on Webinar, all of the meetings that I have created that have the tag Webinar will show up in this list. If I choose On Demand Presentation, I know I have nothing set up with that tag, so you'll see that no events come up. Now we're looking at them in list view. I can also choose date view, which will show me a calendar. Now I have nothing scheduled for November, but I can scroll back through the months and actually see which events I have scheduled. And if I scroll back up to the top and choose my event, so I'm going to click on my November Shapes event. Here is the embed code that I can just simply copy and paste into a web page if I'm going to be promoting this event on my own website or any other source. So this is the catalog. So once you've created the event and you've published it, you can come into the event catalog and view all the information. So this is how you create a new event, preview it, and then go ahead and look at it in the event catalog, all within Adobe Connect 9.